Yo, what is up everybody, it's Tuna. In today's video, I'm gonna be looking at the new season of Torchlight Infinite, the City of Eterna. So this season is gonna to look to bring back a lot of the things that we like about the game. You know, it's gonna be a lot of loot explosions, a lot of exploration, a lot of power creep. The one thing that I'm really excited about personally is the fact that they are looking at to fix a lot of the problems that I thought, um, you know, Endgame had previously. So sort of like the gap between T7 and T8, as well as some of the issues with crafting and the power gap between certain classes, right? But the thing I'm most excited about in this season is going to be the endgame system that they're introducing, which you can see here on the screen, called the Eterna Map. Now this, now this system is really, really interesting because not only does it bring a new type of endgame to the game, but it's the first of its kind in Torchlight Infinite, as this is the first new external content to, you know, the, the, the mapping system that they have, uh, that they've introduced since the game has been launched. And the way that this is going to work out is you will be getting a bunch of puzzle pieces throughout your maps. So kind of like three by three Tetris pieces that you will be placing here on this map that you see. And you're going to be pathing through to collect specific rewards, you know, be it flame, uh, flame fuels, currencies, cards, uh, legendary gears and all that kind of stuff. And at the end of this, you will uh, work towards killing a boss. And once you do kill that boss, essentially the web will reset and you'll be able to do that all over again at a harder difficulty and presumably get better rewards for that. So the way that I see this is it's the first time Torchlight Infinite is approaching a roguelike type of system because not only do you get to, you know, keep scaling the difficulty uh, further and further, but they will also allow you to sort of customize the rewards you get, plan your path through it fight through monsters, um, you know, when you get there. And also, most important of all, they're adding a skill tree that will enable you to sort of uh, specialize in what, um, you know, it will allow you to sort of buff your rewards and specialize the way that you go through the web. But in the end, of course, they have also stated that you will be able to get 100% of these passive points. So it is an end game progression system that if you play enough, you'll be able to totally fill out and, you know, it will be very satisfying once you do get to that point. But I presume that this is going to require a lot of hours to complete. As you're first getting into the system, you will have to plan your route, which is also, I think, a very cool part of it. But unlike the previous season, you know, we will be able to fill that out entirely. So that'll be very rewarding for people that uh, want to really engage with the mechanic. So as you can see here on screen, some of the rewards include uh, getting additional tiers of Eterna and you'll be able to spec into those, right? And you can see that there's many nodes like that. And there's also many of these candle looking nodes. What I presume here is also going to be a, um, you know, flame fuel node and some other boss type related nodes. So I sort of think that this is going to be, you know, you're going to want to first specialize into what type of rewards you want to get in the mechanic. And then you'll want to really, really uh, put all your points towards that and focus on that type of content, right? Whether you want to go mainly for the currency nodes or, you know, where you really want to focus on enhancing the boss drops at first, you know, you're going to be able to choose your path through the skill tree and basically make it so that you are tailoring the content to your own preferences to begin with. Then, of course, as I previously mentioned, once you get to the end, you'll be able to basically get the most out of everything once you've fully specced out your, your tree, so you won't be missing out on anything if you are one of those power gamers. One of the things I like the most about the Torchlight Infinite is its addition of new bosses every season. And this here season is no, um, you know, it's no stranger to that as they're adding a new boss that can also be accessed. He is called the Lone King of Eterna. He's going to have some very interesting mechanics and also some crazy loot, which is going to be extremely expensive as it usually is. And of course, it's going to scale from being very easy at the normal levels to being almost nearly impossible <laughs> at the higher levels in its uber form. Uh, because of you know how insane the damage numbers scale in this game essentially so it will be a great challenge to take on for both your early characters and your late characters and i'm also going to look forward to the fact that we'll be able to access this boss um on the on a regular basis unlike in previous seasons because of the fact that you get to fight the boss at the end of every time that you could that you complete your map of eternal so like every scene in Torchlight Infinite, they do add a ton of power creep, right? And that power creep is usually very exciting to interact with because it has a lot of effect on how you build your character and it's going to be sort of um, very impactful for a character in general, right? And this season, what they have introduced is the soul candle system. And the soul candle system is much like the previous system of, you know, the Definity slate and things like that. These candles are will be specifically slotted into your skill gems and they will affect those skill gems um, you know, individually, 
and as well as give you uh, additional bonus multipliers for the skill gems and global multipliers on top of that, right? Essentially, it'll be much like the previous system of Divinity Slates. However, it'll be very specific to, you know, um, to be to your skills. And I think that's an extra really cool way to uh, modify your character further. And I'm really excited to play around with the system. It's going to give you new cool ways to essentially do some crazy damage with skills you might have otherwise not previously used. And I really hope to see things that modify the skills um, rather than just give you raw power. But from what we know so far, it looks like it's going to be just mostly blanket raw power. However, I do really hope to see, um, you know, the addition of certain things that uh, will enable, let's say, like secondary skills on triggers and whatnot to be used in a way that you wouldn't otherwise have used and potentially actually enable new playstyles within the game, right? As the Divinity Slates have done, and I really hope to see that forward uh, going forward here in this new season. So as every new Torchlight season usually does, we, they've introduced a new hero trait, the Flame of Pleasure Gemma, and as you can see, she looks uh, pretty good. Uh, this is going to be more of a hero trait focusing around creating uh, brands and fire damage to enemies. And I don't know exactly how it's going to work just yet, as they have not really uh, shown us much information about it. As you can see, this is from the screen. It looks pretty cool. Essentially, what you'll be doing is you will be creating like marking enemies and then those enemies will essentially explode dealing damage. And, you know, it's going to look to be pretty cool as long as the damage multipliers on that is uh, are going to be high. Uh, we'll have a lot of fun with that. And I usually feel like the, the new classes are quite strong. So you're quite safe on look, looking to play this class on release. And, um, you know, it's something that you'll also be able to buy with the points that you have previously accumulated um, right from the get go. So. That is one to look forward to. And they've also introduced an entirely new class that is called the Forsaken Iris, which is gonna be a class that is more focused around using uh, minion types, which are gonna be sort of much like golems in Path of Exile. They're gonna be following you around and you are gonna be empowering them with new skills to be able to deal a ton of damage and also basically put them into overdrive. The way that I've been seeing it is these things are actually pretty crazy. You know, they're moving extremely fast and they're doing a, lot, a ton of AOE damage. So unlike, you know, uh, the minions in many other games, which are slow and have like clunky AI or whatever, these guys actually look to be pretty insane. As you can see here from the gameplay, you'll be just running around and convocating and create this massive circle around you. And when you do that, you basically put them, you're giving them essentially overdrive. They run around, they slam everything on the screen. So that is looking to be pretty good. And honestly, generally when they release these classes, they're completely overtuned and they go through and sort of uh, nerf a little bit, like uh, nerf their power a little bit later on. So, I mean, honestly, it's gonna be like one that you'll be pretty safe to start with as well this season. So looks pretty cool. And finally, for the classes, they have looked to buff some of the very, very underperforming ones. That is Carino, Ranger of Glory, Yuga, Spacetime Illusion, Carino, Lethal Flash, and Yuga, Spacetime Elapse. So I would consider these to have been some of the more weak classes in the game. Uh, however, you know, there are some sort of niche scenarios where they were pr uh, pretty strong, but I am very much looking forward to these classes being blanket buffed. In some cases, you know, they've even tripled their damage. So I think... Uh, it's going to be interesting to see the numbers on those and uh, really interesting to see the potential new builds that pop out of these classes. I think especially, you know, Spacetime Illusion was already strong in some places. So if the numbers are right, these classes are just going to be crazy. Lethal Flash as well, of course. And Carino, um, uh, Ranger of Glory too. I mean, essentially, if the numbers are right, these are going to be quite insane. So that's one thing that we've yet to see. They've not uh, shown us all the, the numbers entirely, but... I trust that they have gone through and actually made those, you know, viable now. And I look forward to actually potentially look uh, finding and making new builds with these classes in the new season. Now, I think that the biggest change and one of the most needed changes in the game was uh, crafting rework, right? So what we know from the previous season is that they actually reworked the crafting in a way that was actually negatively received by the community and myself included. I think it was sort of a step in a direction that I felt like made crafting harder, but made it better in some ways, although needed a lot of help to, you know, be improved, right? So there was two stages to crafting. Um, the first stage, you're basically looking for a base uh, with a craft uh, with a modifier on it that you want to keep, and then you want to try to roll a second modifier on it. And then the second stage 
was that you locked in those two modifiers and you would add remove a modifier until you got the one that you desired, right? The process was very expensive and also it created a gameplay loop where you would look for bases and you would roll modifiers on them. You know, you would lock one modifier and you keep rolling. And if you didn't get a second good modifier, you're basically throwing the base away. Essentially, it was a lot of um, it was a lot of looking for bases and then throwing them away. And it ended up being sort of like a bad gameplay loop that I, I think, you know, wasn't that fun in particularly. But what they've done now is that they've made it so that the first um, stage of crafting, you do no longer have this stability issue where you can keep rolling until you get your second modifier without having to find a new base. So this is going to add a lot more value to the bases that you find with one good modifier on them. And it's still going to allow you to essentially be excited about items that drop on the floor. However, um, will also enable you to, you know, keep being excited for those items as they will never get to a stage where they are completely bricked. And then further going down the line, you'll then be able to upgrade those modifiers, right? So they give you the ability now to spend a ton of uh, currency to essentially get those modifiers, you know, from lower tiers to higher tiers and, and basically keep upgrading them and working towards getting your item to the perfect state right and they've actually even shown some items with full t0 modifiers so i assume uh, what they'd like you to do is to be able to incrementally upgrade your items from them being potentially you know not the best tier of modifiers on them to being the best possible so essentially it's going to be more of a um, you know step up grind rather than it being a full rng casino crafting type system essentially i think that is a very good step it's a step in the right direction it's going to be good for the game as it will give people uh, things to work towards rather than just being at the mercy of RNG or the trade house. So I think overall we'll have to see how it plays out. But the crafting system is looking to be a ton better than what it was in the past. And of course it's going to cost a lot of currency to get the item to the perfect state. However, that is a hell of a lot better than potentially never actually getting the item that you want or the modifiers that you want on that item. So... It's going to sort of allow you to uh, have a smaller barrier to entry to build, but then have a higher ceiling on them and also allow you to invest a ton more currency into that item to sort of also bridge the gap between, you know, very powerful legendary pieces of gear and, um, you know, very powerful normal pieces of gear, right? Because um, as we've seen in the past and in the previous season, right, there was a lot of people with basically only legendary pieces of gear because it was just so hard to get um, normal gear that was on par or as strong as those pieces, right? I really hope that this season makes it so that you will be able to craft items that are as strong for your build. As you can see here on screen, you know, it's going to cost like 100 FE in some cases to upgrade some tiers. So it's not going to be easy or cheap by any means to grind for the perfect gear, which is also a great thing about um, this game. You know, it's going to give you a long long-term grind for you to actually get your character to a perfect state so yeah i'm really excited about that and overall i think the game is looking really good the season is looking much much better than um than previous seasons for me and i'm actually quite excited about it there are even more changes to uh to beacons you know so like you'll be able to basically um go from t6s uh, to t7s and t8s much more easily the gap between those is not going to be quite as high and your card sets as well you're going to be able to choose the cards that you have active and they're all going to be active at the same time so you will have all of those benefits on your um on your maps and yeah there's a lot a lot to talk about but i think for this purpose of this video i just wanted to talk a little bit about the season and the spoilers and everything that's coming forward and yeah that's about it so i hope you guys have enjoyed this video and remember the season is coming out on september the 7th so i look forward to be playing this and i hope to see you guys there as well peace out